Why does a chin have seven strings? The chin, as well as other stringed instruments of sinospheric origins, arrange their strings unharmonically. That means each subsequent string is tuned with the next tone of the mode in mind. Rather than having them spaced out in thirds, fourths, fifths, or even octaves apart. This, in turn, means that each string, when pressed uh, or upon using harmonics, would match up with not only one or two strings, but basically every other string, making them all cross traceable. It is said that chins in its infancy started with only five strings to depict the five primordial sounds. Makes sense and obvious that traditionally the first five strings are named after those sounds. However, when we look at the modern standard tuning, we see that the order is not Gongshang Jue Zhu Yu as the string names suggest, but rather Zhu and Yu tones at the end of the cycle are placed before the gong sound instead, effectively making the gong sit in the middle of the five strings rather than the lead. Why? If we refer back to Guan Zi's Di Yuan chapter, you'll notice that zhi and yu's numbers are larger than the gong sound, as a result of adding a third to gong and shang's values. If we follow this logic, then the gong sound naturally would be situated on the third string, flanked by zhi and yu on the lower string, and shang and zhi higher. Is it possible to have the tones match with the string names then? Well, that's what huang zhong tuning is for, uh, by slackening the third string by one lu. But why is uh, the third string considered the standard instead of the first? The answer gets a little complicated, so let's explain the problem back on standard tuning as we know it first. So on the five string instrument, say you're trying to get the strings prepped and tuned. How do you go about setting it? The typical example would be to set Huang Zhong yourself, or copy the tone off of another instrument, like a bell, and then move from there. So if you set your gong string, then you press on the tenth way of your new string to, pre to pretend that by the time you release it, you're adding a third of that length, you would then get lower zhi uh, tone. So following this process, you uh, chop it uh, a third off, and then you get uh, shang, yu, jue, and so on. But what happens after that? Not only have you run out of strings to go on to next, but because the next tone after jue on the cycle is bian gong, not gong, so with only five strings, where can you go next that's not the string that you just came back from? So if we want to have strings that only show the five pentatonic sounds rather than go on to the sixth or even seventh tone, you'll have to add another string, and that technically goes also backwards. So if we have the third string as gong and the fifth string as jue, that means the next string, that's not going back to third, would be seventh, or two strings down instead of going up. And from there, you're now going backwards on the gong, zhi, shang, yu, jue cycle. So seventh being yu, and then back to shang on the fourth string. And then zhi on the sixth, and thereby prove gong on third. But even if you're tuning in man zhi or slack and third string tuning to have the gong sound on huang zhong or first string tuning, the process is still the same. You start with the first string as gong, ignore orthodoxy for now and do a reverse permutation by pressing on the ninth way to get the zhi sound, which we'll record on open sound uh, string four, then string two, five, seven, because you get stuck at three, cross-check at four, 
six, and then three. You see how much messier this setting is compared with uh, having gong string on third, unless the strings were added lower than string one, which then would make the original first string the third string, which <laughs> defeats the point. In any case, you need to have at least two sounds beyond the fundamental pentatonic octave in order to have enough to borrow to return back to the fundamental tone. So, seven strings is indeed the minimum amount of strings required to return back to the fundamental, the gong, with no repeats and no backtracking. Okay, so seven strings has its strengths over five. So, why not have more strings then? I mean, more must be better, right? Prior to uh, the heavy theoretical arguments, I'll spoil you with the answers first. Take a look at this diagram provided by uh, Facebook user Alex Cortez. Uh, this simple diagram and explanation on the current 7-string system as the TLDR of it all. It is the most perfectly symmetrical distribution of tones within the pentatonic scale. Any other distribution yields a minor third between any of the bracketed pairs of strings. But in this one, there are only fifths. Asking why the Gu Qin, also known as the Qi Xian Qin or Seven String Qin, has seven strings, implies the question of stabilizing this design to this number of strings especially when the lore of the earlier specimens stated otherwise that it only had five. While unearthed artifacts suggest that Warring States period China experimented with more strings, the most well-known number being ten, Song Taizong experimented with a nine-stringed qin, and in the 1618 uh, manuscript Li Xing Yuan Ya, it contained a small repertoire proving its feasibility in performance, although uh, John Thompson believes that they are a Ming fabrication created later, rather than a transmission from earlier Song times. Through investigating the historical variants of chins with different numbers of strings, I venture to propose that the Gu Qin as we know it today namely in the seven-string variety, is a bold, radical departure from Chinese numerology and cosmology, and instead an affirmation to utilitarian, pragmatic design centered on the manifestation of the Pythagorean cycle of fifths, or Sanfen Sun Yi, really, cycle of fifths principle. The gong sound, or do, tonic, or one, is always positioned as the third or center of the pentatonic gamut by virtue of Guanzi's uh, presentation of the cycle of fifths, starting off with adding a third to generate the Zhi sound, or sol, dominant, or five, in a lower register, and then reinforced by Yin Yang school doctrine that the Gong sound is related to the earth element, and hence its central positioning as opposed to others in its cardinal directions. Take a look at the standard tuning tables on the 7, 9, and 10 stringed instruments listed below. The square brackets link the perfect fifths in the open sounds of a string. In the case of the 10 stringed variant, uh, the diagram at the bottom, the one with the circle mark, we see that while there are redundancies for every one of the pentatonic tones, because there are two uh, strings of uh, the same tone and two different octaves, the fifth pairs are unequally spaced apart, with more on the lower strings making the focus of the instrument very top-heavy. As one cycles through the altering the gamut by shifting the gong or the jue, or the Do or Mi strings, up or down, uh, they swap into a new Jue or Gong when you do that. That's the uh, Xuan Gong Zhuan Diao cycle that you learn from 
uh, tuning to the external tunings. Having 10 strings would cause much redundancy and work for the player to maintain. While on the bright side, this translates to more raised or lowered accidentals by creative omissions on select translations, uh, which is a known device, which I said as before, known as the external tunings or YDL. It only contributes further to the imbalance of the bass tones and estranges the periphery strings from the harmony-based performance based on perfect fifths. While the seven-string model closed the cycle, it also made a change that may send gasps to the yin-yang and five-element school folks. The gong tone is no longer center, but shang. Symbolically, that offsets the centrality of the land that is yellow, that is earth, that is center, and sovereign, now replaced by the minister or the subject, which is the color white, the element metal, and from the direction west. Now consider this, the father and son, Chang and Fa, of course now known as Kings Wen and Wu of Zhou, were once subjects of the tyrant king Zhou of Shang in the Western realms. Moving the Western string to the center of this layout, along with two new string additions named in their sake? Hmm, coincidence or conscious political maneuver? Song Taizong's nine string chin moved Gong back into the center by adding two strings lower into the mix, but that never took on in popularity. Was his virtue simply incomparable to the paragon that was the first kings of Zhou, the foundation of Chinese Li? There may be a simpler explanation. Shang is simply a better tone to carry out the role as the middle of the instrument as it is the only tone that connects to another recognized tone on the pentatonic scale, whether it's moving up or down by a fifth. And that is exactly what creates the symmetry that modern students of the instrument rely on every day to set and tune the strings. Food for thought. If seven strings is a good way to round off a pentatonic cycle, what about heptatonic scales? Perhaps like Tian Le Zhi and his 360 tones, only going halfway in discovering eventually the 665 equally spaced tones. Is Song Taizong's nine string chin perhaps well intentioned for the future of heptatonic music? but was caught in the ancient orthodoxy of putting Gong in the center and failed to see the potential in what having this many strings could possibly do, what it could become. What would happen if we just so happened to slip in a sixth and seventh tone, namely Fa and Si at four and seven, between the pentatonic gaps? While this would mean that most uh, Guqin pairing habits would have to jump an extra string further, a lot of previous assumptions uh, and fixes with pentatonism, like changing the mode by switching out a gong to a jue and vice versa, by the xuan gong juan diao cycle, or a lot of other assumptions in pentatonism itself, would be thrown out the window in this new design. From here on out, it would be unexplored territory, so I leave you all our current knowledge and insights, and may fortune favor the bold in those exploring in this direction. <laughs>